We should really lend an academic mind to the leadership skills employed in running some of the world's most prosperous companies, and there are lessons in failure, if that happens to be the case. None of us would like to make mistakes that would cost $70 billion. It might be better to review a few wrong steps of Meta CEO, and learn ahead of the time we might control such a big company too. 1. Changing the company name to Meta without seeking feedback from the users. Sometime in October 2021, Facebook's parent company suddenly announced a name change. It was met by several rejoinders, essays and memes. Nevertheless, the name stuck as requested. Facebook, or rather Meta has always done whatever it fancies, within its exclusive decision caucus, only measuring users' reaction afterwards, before bringing up another. A few ideas succeeded and a few had to be dropped. They have added stories and reels to copy features from other apps, simply trying to retain users' attention and remain the juggernaut. The additions had then received various feedbacks from the people. Now, Instagram is being redesigned so frantically to Xerox TikTok experience that there were claims of UI copyright infringements. Funds for sponsoring creation of content for Reels has been one of the major expenses incurred by Meta to compile standout footages, yet Reels haven't driven engagement enough for the ads to generate profit. User complaints rather mount higher that the traditional picture sharing experience is getting eroded. Some celebrity users staged a big showdown because the management is forcing them to change their content creation format. I actually like many of the sophisticated drone shot landscape footages and cooking recipes, but I wasn't a regular user prior to Reels. Unfortunately, however, YouTube Shorts and the other dedicated video sharing platforms continue to attract users like me. On another hand, as prominently, Zuckerberg has been spending a lot of money on the metaverse world, believing it's going to be, wow, enough to make everyone impressed and well immersed. A $400 VR headset add-on and undivided attention is just the basic price. It might be the sole source of entertainment in a lockdown world, but might not be as readily available in public like a Facebook wall, that's what I think. Some people don't even know what it's all about yet. Some have another idea. However, Mark believes greatly in it so it's not a bad idea to spare a thought for possible opportunities in an early mover's advantage in one aspect of commercializing it because there is a proven company and CEO behind it. Nevertheless, this virtual world social media has to be really exciting for users based purely on the genius of its founders. Other people get to shape very little of it. This is why I believe you should launch surveys occasionally to receive feedback from your customers about impending product changes and their preferences. You can also use this to generate ideas. There are simple online forms, Google Forms, Typeform, Jotform, CrowdSignal, and there are dedicated survey tools, Zapier, Sogo Survey, SurveyMonkey, HubSpot, which you can employ to conduct research or measure satisfaction. Talking of generating buzz, you can also host the submissions on social media. For example, Techno asks users to submit short video clips they have shot with the latest Techno Common mobile phone. The series was titled Common 18 Short Film Challenge. The gallery of their submission were made to feed content for marketing threads, and eventually the winners got a prize. Getting the users involved in activities will make them connect more to a brand story, and feel loyal to the products. You can avoid his mistake by being more concerned with feedback. 2. Expanding workforce census too aggressively, based on growth projections from the lockdown period. This July, Zuckerberg said Meta plans to downsize or completely eliminate several departments over the next year. It will be done to reduce their big pile of pink slips. He was quoted to have said, our plan is to steadily reduce headcount growth over the next year. Many teams are going to shrink so we can shift energy to other areas inside the company. According to a detailed Wall Street Journal report, the tech world is presently bracing for a recession, therefore Meta is purging itself to get slimmer. The layoff will be as much as 10% this year. This is in contrast to the massive hiring they undertook in 2020. Upon the enthusiastic projections that followed the user engagement enjoyed during the lockdown, 
this company made it a point of duty to assimilate all the tech talents available. Statista claims Meta employed nearly 30,000 workers between 2019 and 2021. It was not only predatory but unnecessary. While limiting the options left in the pool for other small companies, such a growth for growth's sake is not progressive, because knowing how to scale workforce is very important for every project. Your company can do better by not drawing unfounded inferences from skewered metrics, sentiments, or seasonal spikes. Whenever you do experience growth periods, you have to allocate those windfall resources to more rounded sustainable development so as to be more immune to market dynamics thereafter. In fact, a startup failure postmortem research carried out by Protocol concluded that bad planning and lack of strategy, as regards expansion, is one of the principal reasons several companies fail. It's possible you have temporary workforce needs to fulfill. Some of the ways to go, if unable to afford long-term hiring includes outsourcing, redistributing responsibilities, hiring freeze, modified employment plans, and seasonal hiring policies. You need to learn generally about how to make hiring decisions better. When it comes to scaling up your internal operations, you should use better measurement tools specific to your purpose, and make sure to brainstorm with members of your team empowered to speak on their perspective and recommendations, for a more comprehensive game plan eventually. 3. Using his business platform to favor his liberal political leanings. It's one thing for him to show his liberal tendencies, and alienate 45% of the US population, it was another thing to actually help politicians harvest data and target voters, while suppressing other political views, allegedly, with the Facebook algorithm. Facebook reportedly provided personal data to a partner Cambridge Analytica, to aid electoral campaign in 2019. The scandal has been so massive, they have not been able to live it down fully. Business leaders can have political convictions, of course, but better not display it in corporate colors. It's actually better not to offend clients and customers by leaning too strongly or being condemning of other views. It will certainly serve the wrong purpose. Let your workers also handle their political views privately without official involvement. Your business will welcome more people and maintain freedom to function in any government regime. Perhaps, politics is also the reason why Facebook couldn't negotiate entry into China, like Amazon did. I can only implore you to do better. This might actually require official policies relating to workplace conduct, engagement and relationships. Usually, it just takes proper executive posturing and laid out practices. This provision will go a long way in maintaining the sanctity of your brand image and possibly revenue sources. In conclusion, actions that are considered high risk should be taken with proper decision-making process, involving the right tools and platform.